Hello and welcome to more great content from the 2020 Beijing International Auto Show. In this video, we are going to talk about some cars that are very unique to the Chinese market and that you will likely never see in markets abroad. That's things like a luxury van from Volkswagen and even a four-cylinder G-Wagon. Let's get started. We will begin our journey here with the Honda Breeze. Uh, despite a name that elicits images of open top driving, this is obviously not a convertible, but rather a compact crossover. Like nearly all of the models we will be discussing today, this is a joint venture car. What that means is that it was produced by a foreign manufacturer in cooperation with their local partner, in this case, Honda and Guangxi Automotive Corporation. If you're getting a little bit of deja vu when you look at the Honda Breeze, there's a good reason for that, because it is essentially a revised Honda CR-V. While the bones remain the same, there is some appreciable difference in exterior styling, with the Breeze taking on a front-end design that is very reminiscent of the Honda Accord, particularly the chrome bar that runs across the top of the fascia. The rear is also revised, removing the chrome strip that connects the taillights, which are a bespoke design. The interior is almost completely carried over from the CRV, and the car includes many of Honda's latest safety features. Uh, customers can choose between multiple powertrains on their Honda Breeze. There is a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine making 193 horsepower and 243 newton meters of torque, or a 2 liter hybrid powertrain putting out uh, 215 horsepower and 315 newton meters of torque. Now, the first of those engines comes with a CBT, while the second one comes with what Honda calls an E. CBT. Uh, there is also front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive available. The Honda Breeze starts at just $24,000. Next up, we have the Volkswagen Valoran, which enters the hotly contested luxury van market here in China. Now, the concept of a luxury van might seem pretty foreign to those in Western markets, but these vehicles have reached, uh, have become very serious status symbols in uh, East and Southeast Asia. Uh, this particular one is a joint venture car between SAIC and Volkswagen and will be competing with competitors from brands like uh, Toyota with the Toyota Alphard and Buick with its GL8, as well as local brands like Trump Chi. While I've been referring to the Valoran as a van, its exterior styling is much more akin to an MPV, rather than the very upright posture of a traditional van. Around back, it even features a raked rear end that takes inspiration from the world of SUVs. Of course, exterior styling is not where the Volkswagen Valoran needs to compete here in the luxury van market. No, in this market, what matters most is what's on the inside. And in that respect, Volkswagen seems to have delivered. Uh, here in the second row, we have a pair of reclining seats like something out of a first-class airplane cabin. Now, this might seem a little bit over the top, uh, but this is considered required equipment in competitors like the Buick GL8 and the Toyota Alphard. The Valoran is powered by a choice of two 2-liter two TSI turbocharged four-cylinder engines producing 184 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque, or 217 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque, both paired with a 7-speed DSG dual-clutch automatic transmission. With all of those luxury features, the Volkswagen Valoran is a far cry from the commercial vans that you see in markets uh, like Europe. The Valoran starts at a decent price of about $41,000 here in China. We will start with this, the China market only 5 Series Li, aka the long wheelbase 5 Series. Uh, it will surprise you very little to learn that apart from the extra 130 millimeters, about 5.7 inches I believe, uh, of uh, wheelbase, this differs very little from its short wheelbase brethren. That means handsome styling with distinctive LED lighting front and rear. The classic BMW grille continues to grow year by year, but the 5 Series manages to stave off the massive mug of the latest 3 Series and X7, at least for now. Now, this is one of the first times I've sat inside of a joint venture product from Brilliance BMW, and I have heard some rumors that there is a, uh, a bit of decontent that, decontenting rather, that has been done, but I have to say that I'm not getting that feeling. This feels uh, very much like every other BMW that I have sat in, regardless of whether it was an imported one or one made here. Buyers can further upgrade the interior with things like dual touchscreens for rear passengers to complement their extra legroom. 
We understand from BMW that will be a, there will be a range of four-cylinder powertrains on the 5 Series, going from about 204 horsepower to 288, all the way up to 292 with a brand new 535LE plug-in hybrid. Starting prices on the 5 Series long wheelbase here in the Chinese market is around $62,000. We now take a short hop over to the Mercedes-Benz stands to have a look at a direct competitor for the 5 Series Li, uh, the E-Class Long Wheelbase. This is a joint venture product between Mercedes-Benz and their local Chinese partner, Beijing Automotive Industry Corporation, or Bike. That makes this a Beijing Benz. No, I'm not kidding. That is the actual brand for their, or rather, the actual name for their joint venture brand. Like the BMW 5 Series Li, the long wheelbase E-Class has been on sale here in China since about 2017, though this is of course the newest version. Unlike the 5 Series Li, the E-Class long wheelbase will soon be exported to the Indian market, which is very interesting. Uh, the 5 Series adds 130 millimeters of length, whereas the uh, E-Class long wheelbase adds about 140 millimeters of length, though I believe that the overall length of the 5 Series is slightly longer. This latest version enjoys the same refresh that other E-Classes received earlier this year, including an exterior that looks very much like a smaller S-Class, which we doubt will upset too many E-Class buyers. The interior of the 2021 Mercedes-Benz E-Class long wheelbase will feature the same upgrades seen in the short wheelbase version, such as a new steering wheel with capacitive touch buttons and the latest MBUX multimedia system with a 10.25-inch and 12.3-inch display. In the short wheelbase version, the touchscreen is a standard feature, and the car can be equipped with a heads-up display that uses augmented reality. Uh, much like the BMW 5 Series we looked at earlier, the long wheelbase E-Class comes with a range of four-cylinder engines here in the Chinese market, including a minuscule 1.5-liter engine uh, combined with a 48-volt electrical system, all the way up to the Big Daddy 2 liter with about 299 horsepower. Much like the BMW 5 Series long wheelbase, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class long wheelbase starts around $60,000 here in China. Are you looking for a vehicle that's got all the show of a G500, but about half of the go? Boy, do we have the car for you. The brand new G350. That's right, in place of the fire-breathing V8 motor of the G500 or G63, the Chinese market can now, uh, now offers a four-cylinder, two-liter turbocharged engine for this G-Wagon. Of course, when you buy a car like this, the thing that you're most worried about is whether everyone else is going to realize that you bought the cheaper one. And the good news is they probably won't. For the uninitiated, it's actually very hard to tell this apart from a G500 or even a G63. Uh, there is uh, very little going on other than you've got the classic boxy design of the G-Wagon because aerodynamics is for losers and poor people. Uh, and also the amazing on-road presence. Your neighbor would, your neighbor who drives a G500 probably wouldn't even be able to tell that yours was a G350 until they got in there and turned the car on and heard the exhaust. Of course, the G-Wagon is known best for its off-road performance, and in that respect, the G350 also doesn't lose any ground to its larger siblings. It has the same uh, low-range gears, uh, locking differentials, and four-wheel drive system as the G500 and the G63. The good news continues when you take a look inside, where you are greeted by swaths of soft leather, bright aluminum work, and big LCD screens. It's an identical experience to the G500, down to the heated, cooled, and massaging seats. There's really only two times that you will know that you chose the cheaper version of the G-Wagon. When you press the throttle, and when you go to the dealership to pay up. The Chinese buyers who choose the G350 will save about $30,000 when they choose it over a G500. Now, it's not quite the screaming deal that you think it is because the G-Wagon starts at $240,000. That's right here in China, the Chinese market. So for $210,000, you can get a two liter with 255 horsepower. Okay, that's going to do it for this video, but please stay tuned for more great content from the 2020 Beijing International Auto Show. Thanks for watching.